Hi, right, hello, welcome to my video blog. Um, I ran a few video blogs, mainly I was doing my railway, but I've also been building a valve amp. It's the second build of this um, valve amp, the engineer's amp, and this is the part I said I was going to be doing all the wiring. Um, if you've been following along, you'd have seen some of the work I've already done. And you can see now all the wiring for the transformers has been done. They're all connected up in here, all colour coded to the PCB. Um, you've got your output parts of your transformers over here to, to the um, and left and right same um, just a couple of things to point out you have a ground wire on the left and right there's the green one I've connected up here and there's a purple one over this side both of these go to your um, output negative side on your speaker terminals so that's one thing to bear in mind um, you've also got up at the top here is a feedback cable I know it's not in focus but um, there's your feedback cable left and I've got a feedback um, over here on the right in the corner um, so they then both them feedbacks also go down to your positive output on your speakers so you don't have to connect these according to the website if you're going to website it's, it's um, a preference but there you go I've connected them up and it works quite well with them connected um, I've got my input terminals down here on the right hand side which are going up to the top part of the amp. I'll see if I can focus this in a bit better. I don't think it will though. There we go. No, it's not going to focus on this camera. Um, I'll see if I can put it onto auto focusing and manual focus. Sorry. Ah, there you go. So, there you go. There's the feedback wires over on the right hand side, and this the other side of the output feedback and the ground wire that I was talking about earlier going to your outputs on your speakers. It's a bit messy still, I haven't connected, um, wired, wrapped everything up um, so I've still got a fair bit of work to do on the amp it's just a matter of getting it up and running. Up here is my on off switch I showed earlier on, I'll show, I'll show you that in a minute um, it's got my two feeds for the which is this white cable which is the live in and out for the switch and there's two feeds here for the 12 volt supply which will be supplying the LED in the switch and I'll have some LEDs that will be on the back here that will be colouring through this bit here you'll see later on, later on anyway for now I'll just refocus this and get it out I'll just put my camera on the tripod um, because the next thing is to power it up so um, I'll just show you my setup before I power it up just for the safety side people building these sort of amps they're running this one's 380 volts on the, the output and transformers roughly or 350 um, so it's quite high voltage, it is lethal voltages, so you do need to be keeping yourself safe if you decide to build anything like this. So for my setup over here, um, I've got a variac for starters, which is down here. Um, this gives me my variable voltages, um, so I can increase the voltage slowly when I first, on, a, on a new build, um, to see if anything starts going wrong. And down the back of my room, which you might not be able to see, I don't know, let's have a look. There it is, the trans there's a big giant transformer down there. That's a one-to-one um, -one transformer with um, isolation, there's no earth on it um, and they connect up on the back wall over there so I've got an isolation system. If I switch it off a moment, I'll just power it up. I've got a, an emergency button just for risk factors and as you can see on my Variac on the back wall that's controlling my voltage going in to that supply at the back. So I can increase it slowly and I've got an indication of what voltage is coming at. So I'll bring that down again, turn it off and I'll just connect up my camera to my tripod. One minute. Right, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is powering this up. I'll just move the camera to the other side of the room. So I'm going to be powering this up to slowly to see if there's any problems with the amp at first. And then I've got to do the balancing which I'll show you as well in a minute. Um, I'll just take a bit of a minute to set up the camera better so you can get a better view where I am. Um, I have connected up and I'll show you in a minute the valves, they're all in there. So just to turn it over flat, you see that all the valves are in there. So it's all ready to power up and go. Right, so the first thing I normally do is I've done some 
resistance checks. Let's just get a pen. I've done. I've already done res, uh, checks on the um, the diodes over here, um, and the the um, I've got the diodes down here and up here as well. They've all been checked out. I've got the MOSFETs have been checked. I did actually find that that MOSFET over here had a dead short between the um, drain and the source, so I've replaced that. It's worth checking these. I did on a first build, didn't check these, and um, when I connected it up, it blew out the um, MOSFET and a couple of diodes. So it is worth checking these, just in case you've blown them up. I don't know if the soldering off, who's static electricity or something. Um, and then the Zenods as well, have all been checked out. So everything should work fine. So the first thing then is I'll turn it on at the wall, make sure my variac's on zero, and I'll power it up. And I'll slowly increase it. And I always keep an eye then on the board, seeing what's going on, make sure there's no smoke. Right, I'm up to 80 volts already. There you go, it's up to over 100 now. Oh no, it's 70, so now it's 80, 90. So it's looking good so far. And that's up to the full voltage. We've got 240 volts going into it. And it seems to be running okay. There's no magic smoke coming out of it, which is good. Um, I normally do some voltage readings on the some of the inputs, make sure I've got the right voltages going in for the transformers and outputs. So I've already um, checked this out, this amp, so it should be running all right. But I'm gonna show you how I do the balancing, which is the main reason for this video. Um, so I'm gonna put, do my balancing through a scope. I've got a, um, a Hantex scope that I bought on eBay. So I'll just power up the scope. And I'll turn the amp off while I connect up my scope leads. Now we've got two output um, output stages here, and that's the uh, right hand side, and there's the left hand side of the output of the amps. And we need to balance these outputs according to the website again. And you can do this using a, a, a multimeter. So I'm just gonna I'll keep turning this off. And Right, I'll just, sorry, um, yeah, so you can balance these up using multimeters, um, connecting up to the ground pin terminal, po terminal point there, and the on this side it's the RB2, on this side RB1, and on this side ground and LB1 and LB2, and you can take the voltage readings and make, on a, on a multimeter, and make sure that they're 400 milli volts, both sides balanced so they're equal, um, which I did last time, and it works quite well. But now I've got my scope, I've decided to do it on a scope because I find this a little bit better at balancing. So I connect up my scope leads to the ground and I'll put one on test point one, one on test point two. A bit of cheating here really. I've, I've already set this up to make sure it all works before I did the video. So I'll just show you how I balanced it. Um, I'll put it out of balance and I'll show you how I bring it back into balance. So if anyone's building this, don't understand this stage, it'll just give you an idea. Right, some scopes on. Um, I'll just turn the amp on. Let that warm up for a, a little while. I usually push the auto reset in the scope, so it just spins all the supplies up. It might actually be out of balance now, I don't know. Right, I've got both my leads in. I'll just bring these down, and it has gone out of balance again. Um, mainly because I've been running it, so it's warmed up a bit more. As it warms up and you play with it, you find that you, you run it for a few minutes to get it running well, and then go back to redo your balancing. Um, so I don't know what, you won't, won't see this on the video. I'll just take the camera off the tripod, and bring you down to it. Hopefully, there you go, you can see that. You can see the both channels are slightly out on the top and bottom, and they're reading uh, voltage wise I've got up there is 440 millivolts and um, so I'm going to adjust first the balance so this is the top one here is the balance one and and as I adjust this it'll bring these two in line oh, oh wait and there you go that's in line and I'm now reading 424 millivolts so I'm going to adjust the um, biased one pot now it's the bottom one 
um, to bring that voltage down to 400 it's quite sensitive let's see it go 400 so I've got approximately 400 millivolts there and they're both side, sides of the both sides of the valves are balanced now correctly and I'll do that on the left and on the right hand side of the amp and then it's ready for powering up so I won't do that now because I have balanced these up before although they do need to be doing it well I'll do it just to make sure I've got it up in the air um, so I'll turn the amp off and then I'll be able to do the other side right so crocodile clips onto the ground and then on LB1 and LB2 on this side I'll just power the amp up give it a second for it to power up get to full voltage and I'll bring you down in the tripod right so it's powered up now on this side and you can see straight away it's fully balanced, it's stowed balanced this side and I'm reading about 380 volt millivolts, I'm going to leave that alone it's slowly going out of balance as it warms up actually but it's not, not a lot to worry about, you could spend ages trying to muck around this, I don't think it's that important to get it that accurate I'll just bring that down a little bit ok, there you go and it's reading 39, it's 39 to 400 millivolts jumping so it's perfectly alright I'm happy with that, both sides are balanced quite well so I'll just put it back on the tripod right, bring it back in focus Alright, so that's it, balanced both sides. I'll just turn the amp off and the scope off. And I'm happy with that. That's how I balance up this amp to run. And to be honest, it sounds pretty good, so I'm happy with the way the setup has gone. Alright, and that's it. I've got a lot of work still to do inside the amp. Um, I've still got to make all this neater. I've still got a front grille and the name plates put on the front. Um, and it's going to have an LED lighting circuit inside which will shine out through the front here but for now I'll just bring the camera back right so I'm going to now power it up and show it working um, you might have had a glitch in the video for some reason my video decided to stop so still work to be done under there and I've still got to make a front grille um, with some LED lights coming out of here but and I've still got a bit of work on the top not a lot as you can see my speaker terminals are all connected up now over here and that's my input which I'm going to now connect up to my computer oh, I don't drop the leads so that's my computer input there and there's my on off switch I was talking about which I've still got to wire up the LED lighting for and I'll be powering up some music into my speakers on the right here which are another project that I had um, I put a video in and some links to where I got all that they're very very good speakers but the box is, needs to be remade because they weren't nicely made quite heavy right so it's all ready to power up now before I power up I'll just let you know that the, the, the power is coming from the computer and the computer is controlling all the volume control on this there's no actual volume control on this amp this is purely just a, a power amp I'm building a or design at the moment I'm going to be building an, an attenuator um, for the volume control which will be a separate box next to it um, I wanted to do that because when I build different amps and stuff I'll have a separate volume control for that for the time being I'm using the computer um, and I'll probably put a pot 10 geometer on that to control the volume for a temporary fix just one more little note to point out if you remember the MOSFETs that go through the top of the plate um, they're here being screwed in and the heat dissipates through the plate I've not put a heat sink on this I know um, a lot of people have who built these amps and but I prefer it without it and it runs quite well it doesn't get too hot I've been, I've been able to touch it and it doesn't get too hot so it's been fine but I suppose it depends on what, how thick and the alley plate is to the dissipating of the heat from that so I just Set the camera up right and we'll power the amp up and I'll show you it working. Right, so switch it on. Right, so it's now on, it's just warming up. Give it a second to warm up. There you go. Valves 
heaters are all working. And I'll put some try and put some music on. Probably not so accurate. I've just got to change the TV channel over. That's the TV playing. If you heard that music, I just got to switch over the playback devices on the on the computer. So it plays out through the speakers. So set that to default, and hopefully everything works. There you go. That's now running through the speakers of the amp. That's a quick demonstration of the amp running. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll be updating when the amp comes fully finished with all the lighting and the front grills and I've got a bit more varnishing and polishing to do. But in general, very happy with this. This is the second time, like I say, I built this amp. Um, it was just to change the box and that and it's gone really well on the second time. Anyone interested in building an amp for the first time, pop over to Peter's website, which I'll put a link in. It's well worth giving this amp a go, it's a brilliant amp. Thanks for watching.